Hi, my name is Steve Hayes. I'm the founder and president of All Safe Industries. We're a veteran-owned business and we're a full-line safety equipment distributor. We specialize in confined space equipment, gas detection, fall protection, ventilation equipment. And today, I'm going to talk to you about the Draeger XM2500. This is their four gas meter suitable for confined space entry. There's multiple sensor configurations that you can set up in the XM2500, but we'll specifically cover the main gases that you'll monitor for confined space entry, which include O2, oxygen, LEL, or your combustible gases, CO, carbon monoxide, and H2S, hydrogen sulfide. I'm also going to talk to you about our kit that includes in-case calibration. It's the system for your gas detection instruments. So we'll turn the meter on, we'll push the buttons, we'll go through the daily startup, including fresh air calibration, a bump check, how to use the meter and the accessories that are inside your kit, uh, cover calibration, show you how to do that. Then I'll also talk about the maintenance on the, maintenance on the unit. Uh, the sensors that are in this uh, meter don't last forever, so eventually you'll need to change those and I'll show you how to do that. And finally, I'll cover a few other accessories that you might want to use with your Draeger XM2500. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about the Draeger XM2500. Of course, it's a four gas instrument. It operates in diffusion mode, which means that it reacts to the gases right around it. Obviously, you see here the main display screen. It's an LCD display uh, with a backlight when you're in dark areas. You see the two primary operation buttons here. You have your OK button and the plus button. And I'll show you how those work to scroll through the different settings on the instrument. Um, it, there's an audible alarm that comes out right here. There's also visual alarms that you'll see on both sides and in the middle. So no matter what direction you are looking at the meter, you'll be able to see that it's an alarm. And then also the instrument will vibrate when it's an alarm. So you have three types of alarms, audible, visual, and the vibration alarm. This unit can utilize uh, a rechargeable nickel metal hydride battery pack like on this unit. You'll see the contact points here that are the telltale sign that this is a rechargeable unit. Uh, or it also can use an alkaline battery pack and you'll make that decision when you order the meter whether you want the alkaline batteries or you want rechargeable. Either way, you'll get about 12 hours of runtime out of this instrument. You'll see here that there's an aggressive alligator clip on the back of here so that you can uh, connect that to your uniform or your turnout gear and then there's also a uh, hook uh, a loop here I should say so that you could attach this uh, via a carabiner uh, to pieces of equipment or to your gear if you needed to and then this little window here is the infrared port uh, the XAM2500 communicates to your computer or to the calibration station through this infrared window and so you'll want to make sure that when you're doing maintenance and downloading data that you line up this window with your infrared reader. So that's a quick overview of just the XAM2500, uh, the instrument itself. All right, so let me go ahead and show you how to turn on the Draeger XAM2500. Uh, the button's clearly marked. It's the OK on button. And when you press that button, you need to press and hold it all the way through the countdown sequence so that the instrument turns on. When it turns on, you'll see that the software version is displayed. It will show when the calibration is due, which mine just showed in 36 days. Then it's going to run through all the alarm set points that are programmed into the instrument. Out of the factory, these will be set to OSHA settings, and if you need to reprogram those for your own uh, particular needs, you can do that through the uh, CC Vision software that you can download right off the internet. And so you can see just how quick the instrument's powered up and ready to go. It's given us a, a visual uh, on the, uh, uh, the lights to show that those are working and then you can see the display screen is here and then let me point this out Draeger 
uh, has a little warm-up icon right here. So when you first turn the unit on, you're immediately going to get that warning label because it takes about four minutes for the LEL sensor to warm up. So anytime you're using the XM2500, just go ahead and turn this on first so it can go through its warm-up sequence and then you can get the other tools and safety gear that you're going to use uh, during the job ready while the meter's warming up. Once it's warmed up, you can see I've got all four readings uh, shown simultaneously on the screen. And I'll go ahead and show you some of the different uh, settings that we can get to through the instrument uh, by operating these two buttons. Uh, so what we did is we put together a quick reference card just to make it really easy to operate the instrument. Uh, so what we can do is just follow along this quick reference card that we put together for you. Uh, not only did we uh, make some simple instructions, but we also have a QR code uh, that will take you to the Draeger manufacturer videos. So if you want to see what the factory videos look like, just scan that with your smartphone and you'll go right to the videos that we put on our YouTube channel. So first thing is turn on and it says press and hold the OK button for three seconds, which we did. And then to turn off the unit, you would press and hold both the blue plus button and the yellow OK button simultaneously for three seconds. I won't do that right now. I'll do that at the end. And then to acknowledge any alarms, you'll press the OK button. Now when you reach the first stage alarm, you can press the OK button and it will stop beeping at you. But if you hit the second stage alarm, there is no silencing the second stage alarm. Uh, in the minds of the engineers at Draeger, if you're in a second stage alarm, then the instrument is going to remain in alarm until you move out of that dangerous situation or until you uh, have gone back down to uh, the initial first stage alarm. So to turn off the XM2500, all you would do is press both buttons at the same time, the blue button and the yellow button, and hold them down all the way through the countdown sequence, and then you'll hear the meter shuts down. All right, let me go ahead and show you how to use the quick menus. So just like the quick reference card says, you'll press the blue button three times. One, two, three. And that brings up our quick menus. The first one is the bump check. If I want to perform a bump check, I would say OK. If I don't, I'll use the blue button to scroll to the next menu, which is the fresh air cow. If I want to select fresh air cow, I'd press the OK button. If I don't, I'll press the blue button to go to the next menu, which is clear my peak displays. If I want to do that, I'd press OK. If I want to exit my quick menus, I press the blue button again, and I exit the menus. So let's say I want to do a fresh air cow. I'll press the blue button three times really quick. One, two, three. And then I'll use the blue button to scroll down to the fresh air cow icon. I'll hit OK. It starts to flash the sensor readings. And then I'll press OK. That zeroes out the sensors to zero and 20.9. When the display returns back to the quick menu, I can hit OK to reset my peaks or press the blue plus button to return to the regular run mode. Remember, the XM2500 like this is just a diffusion instrument. And so when you attach this to your uniform and you're just walking around while you're wearing the instrument, it's only responding to the gases that are just right around you. If you needed to pull a sample from a confined space, you would use the pump module to draw air samples through tubing up to the sensors in the instrument. So the next section of our quick reference card talks about how to use the external pump. Just place the meter in the pump cradle. You'll push it all the way forward until you hear it click. The pump module will start and you'll have to do a flow test. So block the inlet until the sound sounds solid. And then when you see the green flow light, you know the flow check had passed. You also have a battery indicator here to let you know when the batteries in the pump are running low. The pump module runs on its own set of batteries. So two screws here, the top cap comes off, 
and uh, runs on three AA batteries. That way you're not running down the power of the meter when you're running the pump module. If you decide that you're going to use the pump module all day long, uh, you may want to also use your leather holster here. This just makes it uh, easier to carry, also provides a little protection for the pump uh, module and the meter. So you can just slide this in here like this, snap this down, and now you've got a really nice package here, fully protected in the leather uh, pump pouch here. Um, you've got a belt loop on the back of this, so you could wear this on your belt like this. You can see how the instrument's hanging upside down, so as this is on your belt and you decide you need to see what the readings are, you can just flip this up, see what your readings are, and then let it go back down. You would just wear this on your belt much like you would a radio. If you do decide to use a probe with your meter, you can uh, keep the probe secure in this Velcro part right here. And then if you decide to add extra tubing, you would just connect that to the filter on the top of the pump module and it works as a nice self-contained unit. Now what's nice about this uh, leather pouch here is that if you want to stop using the pump to conserve your batteries, you can go ahead and push the release button. It releases the instrument from the pump module and the pump shuts off like we just showed before. And you can notice there's a gap there so that the instrument can still function in diffusion mode but still be installed in the pump module. And then if you decide that it's time to take another reading, you can just re-engage the instrument into the pump. You'll have to flow test again like we did before. And now I'm right back to using the instrument as a pumped meter. So let's go ahead and go over the final section of the quick reference card that we put in all our kits and it describes how to perform a manual bump check. Remember that performing a bump check before each day's use is very important. It proves to you that the sensors will react to gas when they're in the presence of gas and we can do that by simply using the gas in our uh, calibration gas cylinder. So let me go ahead and show you how to do that. So again, we want to install the meter in the pump module so that we can draw the gas out of our calibration cylinder. So we're going to follow the same instructions we did before. We'll put the meter in the pump module, press forward till it clicks. We'll have to do the flow test again. So you block the inlet until the tone sounds steady. And now the meter's operating in the pump and then we simply take our calibration gas. I've already got a demand flow regulator installed on this cylinder. The demand flow regulator allows gas to flow as soon as I attach, attach it to a pumped instrument. And so here is my pumped instrument. I'm gonna take the fitting on the end of this instrument and connect it to the pump, and the pump will start to draw the gas out of the cylinder. There you can see that the meter is going into alarm. And again, I want to see that the values on the instrument are about the, the values that are on the side of the cylinder. So you can see that my LEL sensors reading about uh, 48 now, and I'm trying to get to 50. My O2 sensors reading 17, which is actually what it should be reading. The uh, CO, the H2S is at about 18.5, and I'm trying to get to 25, so that sensor's a little bit off. And then the final sensor is the CO sensor. It's reading 96, and if you look right there on the cylinder, it should be reading 100. So this is showing me that I'm doing my bump check, and the only one that I'm a little uh, concerned about is the H2S sensor. So I'm going to go ahead and turn, take the gas back off of the instrument just by disconnecting the tubing. And then as, gas as fresh air flows, you'll see those numbers start to come back down. And once the numbers are in regular range, I can just acknowledge the alarms by pressing the OK button, and that makes the sound stop and then they eventually should all come back down to zero. 
So that's how you do a bump check. Now, that H2S sensor was reading about 18.5. And again, if you look on the side of the cylinder, I'm trying to get to 25 ppm hydrogen sulfide. So the important thing is, I was reacting to the gas. I wasn't exactly at 25, but I wasn't at zero either. So for me, that bump check is fairly successful. If I was really worried that it wasn't reading exactly 25 part per million, I would just calibrate the instrument at this point.